In the first video, the introduction to Gymnocolysiums, I explained that of all the smaller growing South American globular cacti, Gymnocolysiums were amongst the most popular. And from their original geobotanical focus in Uruguay, Paraguay, Brazil, Argentina and Bolivia, Gymnocolysiums have entered the cactus and succulent collections of plant lovers worldwide based on three or four particularly important characteristics. Firstly, it is a large enough genus to hold the interest of a collector for a long time. Secondly, there is a wide enough range of bodily morphology, spination, a coloration of the plants themselves and production of flowers to introduce a wide level of variety into the collection without having to go elsewhere. It is a very perfect genus in which people can specialize. Thirdly, the cultivation requirements, once one or two salient details are borne in mind, do not pose any severe challenges, whether for the absolute beginner to growing cacti or for the experienced enthusiast. There are one or two species, perhaps some of the Paraguayan species that may have more extreme temperature requirements, but to generalize, gymnocolysiums are easy growing cacti. They prefer a compost or a substrate which is slightly acidic so for those old-fashioned traditionalists like me who do actually make a compost which includes organic material albeit not a great deal of organic material then a small addition of peat or similar into the substrate will ensure that acidity is maintained for some species there can be a reaction even a violent reaction against a very um, calcareous compost or if you water over a long period of time with water that contains a large amount of lime and that calcium carbonate builds up into the substrate then you can have a very unhappy plant or eventually a dead plant and on particular taxons throughout the series I have suggested that though those particular taxons you must be very careful because the natural environment uh, supports an ecology which is essentially organic in terms of substrate rather than mineral. So, so far so good. Gymnocolysiums are a wide ranging species spread across two thirds of South America. They're easy to look after, they produce flowers very easily and they're attractive plants to look at. In this uh, climactic conclusion to this series, what we are hoping to do is not only to revisit some of the most um, important and hopefully entertaining parts of the series so far, but also to introduce some additional levels to the themes that we have already explored. So as an example of that, we have to provide a narrative thread right through the series what we have done is we have concentrated on a very large unboxing 25 to 30 plants that came from Poland from Piotr in Poland and we have followed them from the initial opening of the box and then taken the typical YouTube construction um, to the max by actually um, potting the plants up and showing some potting up and then we've actually shown the collection grow gradually as we've added those plants into the collection on an ongoing and continual basis. And we have then looked at some habitat photos in the last video that we produced, that was volume 5 or episode 5. So you can compare just how different those plants are in the natural environment growing under the extremely xerophile conditions that some gymnocolysiums exist in the wild where it looks as if they're growing almost in pure sand um, growing under the blazing sun 
but also some gymnocolysium growing in cover and the bushes in tall grass where in contradistinction perhaps to what many people would expect they are actually growing in a large amount of shade and only receiving very harsh very direct sunlight for a smaller proportion of the day. In the first video we also looked at the taxonomy of Gymnocolysium where they fit in the overall scheme of things and their natural alliance with plants like um, Arroya, uh, Matucana, uh, Weingartia, um, Acanthocolysium to name but five and how under the modern understanding of classification they are now seen not to be in a narrower um, alliance with plants with similar flowers as had always been my experience in, in collecting cacti and growing plants over the last 50 years. They are now seen to be in a much broader overarching uh, subfamily concept, the Trichiosurius concept, the Trichosurianae, along with some surprising bedfellows with uh, Rebutia, okay maybe not too surprising, but also with the larger growing plants like Trichosurius, Borsi cactus, Arachipa uh, and others which are not small and globular but large and branching or as I said in the first video columnar like Oreosurius and Espostoa. So the genus concept of Gymnocolysium is relatively well defined. As I've also said and at the risk of being repeti repetitive you don't need to know an awful lot about cacti to have seen one Gymnocolysium flower and to be able to look at an unknown plant in flower and say that's a Gymno because it displays that typical floral morphology of no spines, no bristles, no scales. From the closed flower bud the petals open and the sepals are exposed and there is no covering sheath. Gymno naked, calyx the flower bud, Gymno calysium, those smaller growing South American cacti which have naked flower buds and therefore flowers. The genus concept is ring fenced, well defined. The species concept is very different. So one of the things that I'm going to do on this video as we move through the various things which haven't been drawn attention to so far or which I thought an extra layer of sophistication needed to be added to for the sake of completeness are those particular features which show that the species concept of Gymnocolysium requires further work. But it is a work in progress. We have gone from that period in time when you could buy a plant on eBay from this supplier with one name, a plant from this other supplier with another name, a plant from a supplier in another country with another name, and a plant from a supplier in another continent with a completely different name, and arrive with five plants in front of you and go, oh, what a disappointment, they're all the same plant. Which was the situation in buying Gymnocolysium plants until very recently. But even now, and as an extension when I finish talking to the first activity of the day, really, well, two things, two things. We will look at how a plant which has been bought can now, with a miracle of modern technology, be readily, easily identified, labelled correctly and placed in your collection in a place which reflects its true genetic identity as opposed to a name which some plantsman or nurseryman thinks well that'll do it looks close enough I'm not being disparaging about nurserymen but watch the video and you'll see exactly what I mean so you can buy a plant you can look at a picture of the plant on any of the five sites which I'll come to in a minute which we mentioned on video five and you can see a disparity straight away between what you have bought and what should be. So the idealized image, especially if it's backed up with a habitat picture from somewhere like Cactus in Habitat site, 
and you can see these two do not go together these do not form a perfect picture this is not that plant so how do we rectify that well that's one of the things that we're going to look at very very soon the other thing we're going to do and we have held this back slightly is whilst we had, did do that large um, unboxing, that mega haul of the 25-30 plants that came from Poland, there was a, another plant which came, and some of you may have seen the, uh, the sneak peek trailer at the end of the last video, another plant that came which is truly spectacular. It's, it's, it's really, really, I won't talk too much about it. It's a great plant, but it also serves as a crystal clear example of the problems of misidentification and the graduated steps that may be taken to eradicate errors in naming in your collection. So how do we do that? We'll show you very very soon. Well, good morning and welcome back to Kirkstone. Now I have a fair idea what is in this box because um, I can identify from the Senders origination. So this is from Bura Andrea, so Andrea Bura from uh, near Tura, which is in Jalbertstuk in Hungary. And as I've only ordered one plant from Hungary, I'm pretty certain that this is it. And you may think, when you see this plant, that I've been holding back. And I have, in fact, been planning this all along. And nothing could be further from the truth. So, unless I'm wrong, this is going to be a quite a climactic conclusion to the Gymno Coliseum series, which has featured more than a few unboxings. And we've seen more than a few extremely impressive Gymno Coliseum plants, but this may very well be the icing on the cake. It may even be the cherry on the icing in the cake. It may even be the chocolate sprinkles on the cherry on the icing on the cake, because I think this is going to be truly spectacular. Let's have a look. First of all, we have to denude ourselves of copious amounts of polystyrene. So this is very, very well packed from Andrea Bura. Thank you, Andrea. And I think I probably have enough leeway to engineer ingress into the plant. Now there is only one plant, and as you can see, this is a fairly large box, certainly a good medium. And what you are about to see is something that you will not see every day. And it isn't somebody trying to juggle polystyrene padding. There we are. So that gives you maybe some idea that we're looking at something, certainly in gymnocolisium terms, out of the ordinary. Okay, so I'm holding that up. Ow! Ow! I'm holding that up. I'm trying to find the bottom. Because this is about, I don't know, Size 3 soccer ball size. So maybe a small melon. And what we have here, at the risk of being both repetitive and verging on the cliché, is something that you will not see every day. Ah, ow! Now, in catching that, I've just uh, perforated the muscle at the base of my thumb. Because this is a very spiny and extremely 
Ow! <coughs> Extremely impressive plant. Because that, my friends, my loyal aficionados of this wonderful genus is an absolutely stonking specimen plants of the Gymnocolisium marchese. Here we are. So what we have there is a plant which quite frankly I cannot believe I'm holding in my hands. Gymnocolisseum Marchese variety Argentinense. So according to the taxonomy, and we will be examining that a little bit later with our internet research tools that we looked at on the last video according to the taxonomy and the accepted nomenclature this is that variety of Gymnocolisium marchese which is found in Argentina because marchese is normally a Bolivian based taxon but it does have sub varieties and uh, an extension range into northern Argentina and isn't that an absolutely unbelievably impressive plant we have one main head the plant with one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen offsets So I'll just place that down because I'll have to pick it up again then. I'll just push these roots carefully underneath. I'm trying to think if there's a way I can actually display this in a way that the camera can move across it. I will that balance. It'll balance temporarily. So there we are. I don't know if that's the best view. I don't even know if that's the best view. But there we have that four and a half, five inches across main plant, and altogether including the offsets about six to six and a half inches were I to measure it as the crow flies. Gymnocolisseum marchesii variety argentinense. The Argentinian representative for the normally Bolivian based Gymnocolisseum marchesi. Isn't that an absolutely splendid plant. Okay, my next job obviously is to get this potted up and to show you what she looks like when we actually have her in a new home starting to settle in with all her Gymnocolisseum friends. Thanks for watching and I do hope you appreciate this final uh, unboxing of the Gymnocolisseum series. I don't think in all honesty I could have topped that completely by accident, entirely fortuitous, a sublime example of divine synchronicity made manifest. This was the time for it to happen, and it did indeed happen that way. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the series.
and I hope you enjoy the little uh, features, the few features that we have left to show you. And more importantly than any of that, I hope you are inspired to either extend your gymn Gymnocolisium collection, to start a Gymnocolisium collection, or indeed if you have an extensive Gymnocolisium collection, to continue to research, to find out more and to share your love of the Gymnocolisium plant genus with those who maybe are labouring in an unaware state of just what they're missing out on. Because it really is a fabulous, fabulous genus to collect. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye from Gymnocolisium marquesii subspecies or variety argentinense and right now it's goodbye from me but I'll see you very very soon okay so this is the obvious place to start this is where you are now on the Kirkstone Botanica YouTube channel and you can see that we have recorded so far five Gymnocolisium series um, one two three four and five moving through from introducing the collection developing expanding widening deepening and then finalizing the collection which is where we are now there is also an introductory volume which is the introduction to cacti which basically launches all of the cactus series on the youtube channel on kirkstone botanica that's where we are but there have been a lot of developments over the last few weeks uh, one of the things that you uh, may not know is if i can just switch account here is a few months ago we also launched a second channel with a slightly different focus much more on about collecting uh, plants as a hobby rather than um, looking at the botany and the taxonomy quite so much. So, as for example, we have the, um, the Cactus Collection series, which looks at firstly North and South American, and then looking at some specimen plants, some of the larger growing plants, which may, we may not have in enough numbers to do a special genus feature on Kirkstone Botanica. So we're just looking at North American cacti there. We're looking at the cactus collection here. So some of the similar things that we have on Kirkstone, potting up, unboxing, but particularly focusing, as with this Ferrocactus gracilis here, on a larger growing plants that form real statement pieces within the collection. So slightly different focus, slightly different way of looking at things, may be worth checking out for a more uh, well-rounded vision of what we actually do here. So that's the Cacti, Bulbs and Succulents uh, channel, also on YouTube. And the reason for telling you that is if I can just jump across back onto Facebook, our main social media outlet, we also have, if I can just go to the pull-down menu, as well as the Kirkstone Botanica channel, we have a Paracacti Bulbs and Succulent channel. And as part of the overall offer on the Cacti Bulbs and Succulent channel, which is a general channel, we're looking flowering cacti, non-flowering cacti, we're talking about the news that we do in other areas, other social media channels, including YouTube. We have some community groups and perhaps most relevant and cogent for what we're talking about now, you won't be surprised to learn that if I scroll carefully down here, we do have, yes, you guessed it, a Gymno Coliseum page called Planet Gymno Coliseum. And there's our old friend, uh, Saglionis or uh, Var Argentinense that we've been talking about on the video so far. And uh, we have a huge number of people now from around the world joining in and contributing, like our friend Asha, who is in Malaysia. And we have other people also 
who are becoming really, really involved. So Asha's a rising star. She's rising within the community. She's posting uh, two and three things a day, maybe, and uh, coming to our notice, and maybe she'll become a moderator or an administrator at some point. So some great quality plant pictures coming from Asha over in Malaysia. And uh, from Tijiana, this wonderful, wonderful long-spined version of Saglionis, which is growing in her collection. And uh, another one from Asha. I did say she was busy. And then Larry over in America. So Larry Leibovich, he's posting these flowering gymnocolisium in his collection. And there's Asha with one of her monstrous uh, crustate collections and another one from Tiziana. So there are a, a smaller number of people who are very, very active and a larger number of people who are slightly less active. And this is the page we'd really, really like you to become involved with. Share pictures of your plants, join in the discussions, help to answer queries and uh, back to our main Kirkstone Botanica page. And on the Kirkstone Botanica page, there's also somewhere which is uh, salient to our current conversation. If we go to the photo albums and we look specifically uh, down the photo album collection, we see that one of the photo albums is Cacti South and Central America. And in the Cacti South and Central America folder, you won't be surprised to see that there is a predominant focus shown to Gymnocolisium. And there's some great pictures on here uh, of photos and some plants that haven't appeared anywhere else. So definitely worth checking out if you're interested in Gymnocolisium and other smaller growing South American cacti. But mainly it has to be said Gymnocolisium like this fantastic ad pressed Ragonese here. So different pictures, not, not the same pictures that you see on the YouTube channel, not the same picture you see on the Cacti Bulbs and Succulent channel, and not the same pictures you see on the Gymnocolisium focus group. Different pictures, different angles, close-ups, flowering plants that you may not have seen before, and uh, some sequential pictures where you can follow the development of the plants through from firming, forming the first buds through right until the flowering stage. So cacti bulbs and succulents on YouTube and Facebook, well worth a look at. We'll put the link into the video so you should be able to find it uh, relatively easy. Uh, please do check it out, not just for Gymnocolisium but for other smaller growing South American cacti. Get involved, join the groups, really, really help build the um, community, the Gymnocolisium loving community up and uh, contribute in any way we can. We're always looking for people to become moderators and after they've been moderators for a while, become administrators and take over the running of the group yourselves. I mean, it's your group for your plants, it's not for us, we don't make any money out of this. It's purely to spread the love of the Gymno Coliseum and of the cacti, to be honest, collecting hobby. So have a look, check out what's there, do, do what Larry's done, get involved, post pictures and, uh, and in, enjoy. We also have a login through Facebook and here we are, the Kirkstone Botanica channel. There are lots of uh, Gymnocolisium pictures, as you would expect. So there's an Amahouseri just starting to form its, uh, its buds there. Kirkstone Botanica 2007 on Instagram. Lots of high quality pictures, not just Gymnocolisium, of course. It's not a Gymnocolisium channel, but uh, more information about the plants. Uh, again, as I said in the, the other posts, more gymnocolisiums than anything else. Worth a look. Check it out. And, and of course, uh, post pictures of your own plants on your own channel. And just generally get involved. And new plants tend to go straight up on there. So if we can have a look, for example, at this uh, wonderful new Brachianthem that came into the collection. It's, uh, it's definitely worth a look for those bigger high quality pictures that showcase the plants off as uh, as perfectly as possible. 
So there we are, and there's our old friend Marchese Ivar Argentinense. And every time I see it, it seems, it seems to get a little bit bigger. And there we are. That is that section completed. And back to where we started from cacti bulbs and succulents back into our current place of residence which is Kirkstone Botanica and there's the Gymno Coliseum collection just having a quick look through Gymno Coliseum 5 to see if there's anything I can uh, usefully add and bring in just looking at some of the habitat plants so some of this footage may need to get brought into Gymno Coliseum 6 just to reinforce and to underline a particular point okay so that is uh, is more or less where we are Kirkstone Botanica Gymno Coliseum Cacti Bulbs and Succulents Specimen Plants North American Plants South American Plants the Gymno Coliseum season.